Let's take a look at how we can control the smoothing of our meshes when we start to subdivide them inside of Houdini. So I've just got a box here. All I've done is just extruded out a little bit here just to give us a shape to play with. And there's a couple of different options that we can do for controlling the smoothness of this object as we start to subdivide it down. So the traditional method, which you'd see in other programs are going to be using edge loops. So let's take a look at how we can do that. We'll drop down a poly split. And if we set the path type to edge loop, you can press enter in our viewport. And then you can see that we get these, this line that gets put in as we start to go across our, our edge loops here, or our, our edges here. So it's inserting an edge loop. If I press enter, it's going to insert that in, or if I click, I mean, so we'll add in a second one here and let's put one just up there. And we can drop down a subdivide node now. And as I start to increase the depth here, you can see that we have this harsh edge here that's being generated along this line. That's because we have more geometry being added in here, so it's not smoothing as much in there. So that's typical of what you'd see in other software, but this can create a lot of geometry in areas that you may, may not necessarily want. And it doesn't always work depending on your your geometry, you may need to use some different methods. So luckily, Houdini gives us another method and it's actually on the subdivide uh, here our, itself. We can override our crease weight attributes. So if I just take this and wire in our poly extrude, if I check that and I start to increase this, you can see that we can control how this smoothing is actually being applied here. So we can set this just on the geometry itself over the entire mesh, or we can set this on a per vertice basis or per primitive basis. It works on either one. So let's drop down an attribute create. Let's take a look at this and we need to name our attribute crease weight. And it, like I said, it needs to be either on the vertex or on a primitive. So let's just select our vertices there. And I'm just going to select all of our bottom vertices here. And we need to take this value and I'm going to set this to a value of one. And you can see if we look at our vertices, we have this crease weight that's being applied to it. But it's a value of zero on these top ones. So those should be getting smoothed. So if I take a look at our subdivide now, I uncheck this override crease weight, you can see that we are getting some smoothing being applied here. So as I increase our depth here, we have the crease weight set to one. So after it goes past one, it's going to start to actually subdivide this out. So the crease weight is directly correlated to the depth of your subdivision. So if you go, if you have a value of one and you go past one, it's going to start to smooth out that mesh. So if I set this to two and I come back to our crease weight attribute, I can start to increase this. And you can see that it starts to hold that. And once I get up to a value of two, it's going to just have that be held the entire time for the subdivision. So it's not going to smooth at all. If I bring this down, you can see that we start to get all of that smoothing back in. So you can really dial this in and get the amount of smoothing that you want. It's a very fine tuned control for this. And then again, like I said, if I have this set to two and I come back to our depth, and I set this to three, it's going to smooth that out. So you can control kind of when the smoothing starts to happen and get a much finer control over what your subdivisions, your, your smoothing looks like. So just a quick little tip. I've got a question about that and I wanted to kind of cover that um, for new people that are working inside Houdini. I, it took me a long time to actually even find the edge loop for the poly split. Um, so I didn't know how to do that. So I thought that'd be useful to show as well as the crease weight because you can use either one of these methods to give you some smoothing and you get some a lot more even mesh going on with this crease weight versus our our edge loops being entered in there. So anyways, hope this helped you out. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.